after having tested our actuator under the hood, now we're going to take a look at some of the things inside the car. Starting with our stock to turn on and off the cruise control as well as accelerate and decelerate. So we're going to look at that first, which also gets us right next to where the amplifier is, which is our next step after that. So we're going to dig down under the steering wheel of the car. So some of this I'm going to try and get with the camera that you're watching me right now and some of it I'm going to try and use the faux pro 4 so that I can get up in there so that maybe you can see what's actually going on from my point of view. So we're going to give that a try and take off this kick panel under the uh, driver's or above the driver's feet. So let's uh, get started on this. So to remove our driver's kick panel right here we're going to take out these screws. Now some of these have little covers on them for whatever reason. My car is missing the covers. So just pop these three guys out. Pull this down. And kind of look and flex our plastic a little bit. There we go. Okay, there we are. There's our kick panel removed. So we're going to set that aside. I'm just going to put it in the back seat. This little silver box right here is what we are interested in. Down here on the bottom of it, see if I can get a picture of the bottom of it, there's a connector. And this connector disconnects and has a bunch of pins on it. So we can pull this connector out to where we can get to it and it is like the one under the dash or under the hood of the car it is numbered. So we're going to be testing these with a multimeter to make sure that the stock and everything else is working properly. I'm going to get a picture of this real quick so that I can have a uh, diagram for you on screen. So I've made up some charts. You'll be able to download these. The link is in the description as well as it can be found on our website, trythistv.com. So you can go and pick up that file, print it out, and it has all these instructions, diagnostics, which pins are which, all kind of compiled in a relatively clear manner. So we're going to grab our little Unity UT210 again, and this time we're going to be using the probes. Switch this to volts, and then press the select so that it is volts DC. So we want to be checking DC volts. And we are going to need to turn the key to the on position, not start the car, just the on position. We're going to test between pin number either 12 or 14. So either of these two, which should be ground, so I'm just going to put it in 14 so that we know that's there. And the next one I'm going to test is pin number one, which should be, it's going to be hard to get all the cameras here showing what we need. So from pin 14 to pin one is battery voltage with the key on. So we've got 11.92 volts. That's okay. That means it's good. So our next pin we're going to check is to pin number two, which is right here, to pin 14. So right there, again, it's kind of hard to see. So we've got, eh, it's really hard to make a video about this, so we need 11 hands. Okay, so there, maybe you can see that. So there's nothing there, and when we push the stalk to the decel position, 
it goes to battery voltage. So that means that's working. Next one is pin number three to pin 14. So we're just gonna take this red one and move it over here. So pin number three should be battery voltage. And when we pull the switch to off, it should drop to zero volts. Yep, okay, so that shows zero volts in the off position and battery voltage, so that's okay. Next, we'll move to pin number four. Pin number four is the accelerate set. Should be zero volts, and then when you push it to accelerate set, goes to battery voltage. So that one is working properly. And our next one is pin number six, and that is resume. So should be zero volts. When we pull to resume, I need this camera to continue showing me. Pull to resume, goes to battery voltage. So we've got one last thing outside of the amplifier to check, and that is pin number eight. So right there. And that should be basically um, zero volts. And if we touch the brake pedal, it should go to battery voltage. Now I do note there is a little bit of residual voltage there. I don't know that that's enough to cause an issue. It does seem to bleed off pretty good, so we'll assume that that's okay for the moment. We do have a couple other things we can test um, on here. If we switch this to ohms, we can check the resistance of the feedback circuit in the actuator. So that would be from pin nine to ground and pin nine to pin 13. So pin number nine right there to ground there gives us 3.2 K which should be approximately 3.4 ish. So we'll call that good. Um, and so from pin nine to pin 13 is this one. Should be zero ohms and it is 0 0.9 or 0 0.8 ish. So we will say that is good too. So that proves our actuator is good, both the mechanical, the motor, the solenoid, as well as the feedback circuit and our control stock is good. So this dude up here has got to be our culprit. So at this point, you have tested the actuator, all of the wiring to and from the amplifier, the actuator, and the control stock, and all of the circuitry there within. So you know the brake control circuit is working, you know the feedback in the actuator is working, you know the solenoid and the motor are working fine in the actuator. And at this point, if everything is testing okay, the only culprit left is the amplifier itself. So to do much with that, we're going to have to remove it and disassemble it. Now that is a pretty involved process. So we're going to leave the disassembly of the amplifier and repair process for another video. But we're gonna show you right now what you need to do to remove that amplifier because that is the next step. We'll also have this in the amplifier video in case you just want to watch that one when it comes out. So right here, uh, I'm gonna do a little slideshow so that you can see the process of taking this out because it's really hard to do on video. It's a cramped space up under the uh, driver's side kick panel. So we're going to use the magic of editing to show you what you need to do to get your amplifier out so that you can follow along and repair it. In order to remove that amplifier, where you are at this point in the video, you're going to see something like this picture, where 
You can see the amplifier there, the wire dangling down next to it by the brake pedal on the driver's side with the kick panel removed. So what you're going to do, there's two connectors. This one right here, you're going to unplug. Now you see that one unplugged. You're going to unplug this next one. Now with that next one out of the way, you'll have better access to get into the bracket to remove the actual amplifier. So, if you get in there close, it's kind of a tight space, but you can get in there. Up next to the brake pedal, you're going to notice this little 10 millimeter bolt with a 3 8 ratchet and a deep well 10 millimeter socket. You can squeeze up in there and loosen that 10 millimeter bolt. Once you remove that bolt, you'll be able to remove the bracket that holds the cruise amplifier in. Now it's still gonna be connected to that one wire. So at this point, you can either remove the two Phillips screws on either side of it now that you have access to it, or you can flip it over and push down this little clip and slide the wire off and just leave the bracket connected. Myself personally, I removed the two Phillips screws because with the bracket out, it was easy to get to, and then you just don't have to be disconnecting wires, you know, 30 plus year old plastic connectors that could easily be broken. So after that, in the next video on this series, you're going to get to see this and learn how to repair it. So stay tuned for that. Hopefully this has helped you diagnose one more step in getting your cruise control working on your W123, W126, W124, Porsche, BMW, whatever you have that has the style video cruise control. So, thanks for watching.